Today, we'll be covering the 10 things you will need to know when specifying an industrial wireless system to pick the right radio for your application and get your network up and running efficiently. You'll need to know what kind of devices you're connecting, how many devices you're connecting, how much data you are moving, how often you are sending data, the environmental factors of your radio location, the line of sight between radio antennas, what type of antenna is best for your application, the local laws for wireless communication, what radio frequency you should use, and what channels are available. Deploying wireless communications for industrial applications, however, is not nearly as simple as deploying it in an office or home. There are two reasons for this. First, because of the mission-critical nature of the data being sent and received, industrial applications have a low tolerance for interruptions and packet losses. And secondly, industrial environments pose unique challenges and conditions for wireless communication, such as structural interference, extreme temperatures, and moving equipment that requires flexible signal coverage. Even so, when properly planned and implemented, today's industrial wireless networks can offer consistent, reliable, and secure data transmission. So let's get into the things you'll need to consider. Begin by determining what sort of devices you are trying to connect. There are three different types of applications that are very typical on industrial sites. Communication between HMIs to PLCs, PLC to PLC communication, and PLC to distributed IO communication. The industrial protocol that you use won't really matter unless you are trying to use Profinet IRT, in which case you will need proprietary equipment, which ProSoft does not offer. High quality industrial Wi-Fi radios are more than capable of handling all the data these types of applications typically require. However, the type of data and speeds needed in some instances may require radios designed for I.O. communications specifically. The critical details that you'll need to know are the number of devices that need to communicate to each other and how often data or packets are sent to and from each device, as well as how large the data is that's being sent. As the number of devices on a wireless network increase, so does its bandwidth requirements. As a result, a network with many devices talking at once will have to communicate at a slower rate than a network with only a few devices. For PLC to HMI applications, slightly slower communication speeds are usually acceptable. For PLC to PLC interlocking and PLC to distributed I.O. applications, however, communication speeds and bandwidth requirements are more demanding. Streaming video is another form of data that requires fairly high bandwidth. While it's certainly possible to control distributed I.O. and stream video feeds over the same network, if you do so, it's recommended to keep other non-essential wireless traffic off the network, since both of these are speed-intensive applications. Understanding what your specific application really needs is important, because many systems have been configured to communicate as fast as possible, and this can unnecessarily create a network bandwidth issue. Once you have determined the speed requirements for your application, you can adjust the I.O. update rates for your equipment accordingly and avoid packet loss. Next, you will need to know about the location of your radios and antennas. For a radio link to function at its full potential, the line of sight between antennas must be completely clear. Even partially obstructed line of sight can lead to slower speeds and packet loss. Keep in mind that outdoor applications may have line of sight today, but there could be trees or other vegetation that will become a problem as they grow. 
Also keep in mind that anything that might move into your line of sight routinely, such as a crane or a large vehicle, could also cause intermittent communication problems. Try to position your antennas where they'll be clear of any possible interference. This means placing it well off the ground and six feet or more away from walls or girders. Determining the distance between antennas will also make a difference, whether it be within 100 feet in a cluttered indoor environment or thousands of feet apart outdoors. You'll also need to consider if the devices are stationary or moving. A stationary site makes planning fairly straightforward, but a moving application may require more detailed information and special hardware that is optimized for the challenges that a moving application presents. When selecting your radios, you will also need to determine other environmental factors such as temperature, moisture, and vibration that may affect the radio equipment. Make sure that the radios you choose are properly specced for the environment of your application. Finally, you'll need to consider what country the radios will be operating in, since different countries have their own laws and standards for wireless communication. Your answers to each of these questions will determine, or at least narrow down, what specific radios and antennas are best suited for your particular application. For indoor applications, for instance, you could use our RLX2 IHNF Fast Roaming Hotspot Radio. For outdoor applications where you may have longer distances between nodes, you will likely need radios with higher power, like our RLX2 IHG or RLX2 IHA models. Now, let's walk through a wireless application where you have a PLC that needs to talk to distributed I.O. on an overhead crane. It could also be a rotating machine or other moving piece of equipment. This is a common situation for wireless applications. In our example, your PLC is located in a control cabinet stationed on the factory floor. The control panel contains an operator terminal and the master radio connected through an Ethernet switch. Another control cabinet is mounted on the crane. It contains the other radio, set to remote mode, as well as the distributed I.O. system which is connected to the crane motors and sensors. If your application has three of these cranes and you want to control them all from the PLC and the HMI, you would first need to determine how many I.O. connections they have in each distributed I.O. adapter and the update time of each connection. The full PLC distributed I.O. update time is typically 20 milliseconds for discrete I.O. That is likely faster than what this application actually needs. With three remote devices communicating to the PLC, you should consider setting it to something between 100 and 200 milliseconds per module. Again, the more connections you have, the slower RPI must be to ensure communications are reliable. Indoor and moving equipment applications, such as in our example, benefit from the use of 802.11n technology, like our IHNF radios. This allows you to use MIMO 3x3 antennas, which are ideal for moving applications because there's typically a lot of metal structure to reflect radio signals, and because the radio is moving and its line of sight is always changing. MIMO gets you multiple transmit and receive streams and is much more reliable than traditional antennas. We have a video that goes into greater detail about different radio antennas and how to select the best one for your application. Once you've determined the type of radios that you want to use and the type and placement of antennas, another important consideration is to determine what frequency and channel your wireless network will use. There are two frequencies commonly used for Wi-Fi, 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. 2.4 GHz has three non-overlapping channels, and 5 GHz has nine. Most industrial locations today already have some Wi-Fi signals in the area, and it's important to determine what frequencies and channels are already in use so that they can be avoided. 
For indoor applications, the 5 GHz bands are generally better because it's easier to find an open channel since they have more channels to choose from. For longer distances, 2.4 GHz bands are better suited because the longer wave carries farther, and it's also slightly less affected by interference. The frequency and channel you ultimately use will likely be at least in part determined by what's already being used by existing wireless networks. You'll want to find an unused channel in the area of your application, especially in the case of a moving application like our three cranes, you don't want to lose a single packet. So your channel must be reserved for your application's communications exclusively. Site surveys are very helpful for identifying other Wi-Fi networks in the area. Our radios also have a scanning feature to help you determine what frequencies and channels are being used in your area. Finally, when all these things have been considered, you can design and deploy a wireless network for optimum performance. That is an overview of the process of planning out and setting up a wireless communication network. We hope that you have found it helpful. Keep in mind, every worksite and facility is unique and only a thorough site survey can determine the best choices for radio models, antennas, and placement. If you would like more information or to get in touch with one of our wireless field application engineers, feel free to give us a call.